On July 27, 2018, Disney and Fox shareholders officially confirmed their $71.3 billion merger. And across the galaxy, geeks everywhere rejoice. Marvel's heroes are coming home. The Fantastic Four might finally get the adaptation they deserve. And the X-Men will take their rightful place as the MCU's A-list allegory. Because let's face it, the Inhumans were just never going to happen. It seems like a home run for superhero fans. But outside of the nerd world, the massive merger has some serious implications for the future of cinema. I'm Moose, and this is what the Disney-Fox merger could really cost. The merger still faces some international regulatory hurdles, so it's not entirely a done deal yet. And without the final details, we don't know exactly what the future holds, but we can do some speculating about what the new Disney could mean for the movie industry, starting with trouble for theaters. Even before the merger, Disney controlled a scary amount of the box office. Between the MCU, Star Wars, Pixar, and their own IP, they raked in over $6.4 billion in 2017 with just eight films. In comparison between its various sub-studios, Fox released 26 movies in 2017, but only managed to come in fourth place for the year. Disney will probably pick up some of the slack, but there's no way they're gonna maintain the same level of output when you can make more money with less movies. I mean, they don't even seem in a hurry to release movies that are already in the can, as evidenced by the suspicious silence surrounding X-Men Dark Phoenix and New Mutants. Sources have indicated that, quote, already completed projects would come out eventually, but even if they do see the light of day, Disney could just as easily dump them onto streaming or quietly release them in the box office black hole that is January. So what's the problem, you may be asking? I wasn't seeing Kingsman anyway. Well, we'll get into the creative ramifications later, but from a business standpoint, it's bad news for movie theaters, who Disney are already bullying with ridiculous exhibition terms. You don't talk to me like that! If you wanted to show The Last Jedi, for example, you had to sign an agreement giving Disney 65% of ticket sales compared to the 55 to 60% cut most films get. Oh, the pain, the pain. Not only that, you're required to show it on your largest screen for a minimum of four weeks, or else Disney adds a 5% penalty. Now, a hugely popular movie usually translates to a ton of concession sales, which is where theaters make most of their money. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. But for independent cinemas in smaller markets with limited screen space, Disney's draconian terms mean they're often stuck playing month-old movies to empty auditoriums. Without negotiating power, they don't have the option to run non-Disney movies that might bring in more people, and soon, there are gonna be way fewer alternatives to choose from anyway. I'm sure the big chains will be fine, probably, but this could be the death knell for independent theaters and a big blow to independent film, because as Disney consolidates its power, there's even less incentive for innovation. So let's say the new Disney releases 15 movies a year. How many of those will be daring and innovative films that push boundaries and tread new ground? And how many do you think will be franchise films, remakes, and reboots? Now, I'm not saying they'll release nothing but Star Wars and Marvel movies from now until the heat death of the universe. So long, Earth. Thanks for the air and whatnot. But why chance things with an unknown property when they could pump out a new Black Panther and make a guaranteed billion? Disney just acquired a ton of new IP from Fox, ranging from Die Hard and Predator to Dr. Doolittle. And while they're definitely not going to sit on something like Avatar, with the limited release spots and lack of competition, a lot of franchises are either going to get stuck in the vault until people stop paying to see superheroes, Ormamu, Ormamu, Ormamu. or rebooted in new Disneyfied versions created by committee. Take Alien, for example. Say what you will about Prometheus and Covenant, but they were gory as f Now that Disney owns the Xenomorphs, though, what incentive is there to keep the franchise's gruesome roots intact when a PG-13 version is all but guaranteed to make more money? Or what about Deadpool? The two movies have shattered expectations for the R rating at the box office, and Disney CEO Bob Iger has stated they'd be open to an R-rated offshoot of the MCU. But who's gonna hold them to that? The shareholders? The suits have already put the kibosh on Donald Glover's animated series because it took things too far. Why would the far more expensive movies be any different? As much cash as Ryan Reynolds' raunchy romps took in, they didn't make Avengers money. I'm touching myself tonight. 
And remember, we're just talking about big budget franchises here. What about the Pulp Fictions, the Clerks, the Swingers, and other R-rated provocative films that aren't a sure thing on paper? Smaller studios like Lionsgate and A24 will be able to pick up some of the slack, and Disney has committed to continuing Fox Searchlight, which released last year's Oscar winner, The Shape of Water. But we could see bold, innovative films like these phased out in pursuit of the almighty dollar. I mean, through ABC, Disney just strong-armed the Academy Awards into making a new popular movies category, just so their superhero stuff can win Oscars instead of having to risk slightly less money making an artsy-fartsy film. I mean, why would Disney take any risks when they control 40% of the market? They're not competing with movie studios anymore, they've already won. Now the real competition is Google, Amazon, Netflix, and other massive companies that operate in a much bigger space than movie theaters. Don't forget, Disney's got their own huge streaming service in the works, along with the controlling stake in Hulu they just snagged. If we're gonna see exciting indie films from the new Disney, they're most likely gonna drop on streaming, as theaters become reserved exclusively for safe, big budget blockbusters. So, we're likely gonna see less movies, less theaters, and less innovation. But there's another cost to the Disney merger that might not be so apparent. There's going to be a lot of lost jobs. Post-merger, Disney says that it will save $2 billion yearly through synergies, which is corporate speak for layoffs. These guys have a family. I have a family. I'm all in on this. I can lose my house. I'm sorry, sir. There's nothing I can do. There are no concrete numbers yet, but even the most conservative predictions estimate that up to 5,000 people will lose their jobs, and it could be as high as 10,000. Now, normally, if that many people get laid off, another studio would quickly scoop them up. But now that Fox is out of the picture, that's one less place they can go to work. Those jobs will simply cease to exist, and competition for work in the industry will become even more cutthroat than it already is. <laughs> now, do you think that's gonna hurt the rich, well-connected people, or will it be the innovative new voices and diverse young talent who don't make the cut? That is false. A larger Hollywood means more opportunities for underrepresented people, but with up to 10,000 fewer jobs, that's 10,000 less chances to shine. Of course, you don't have to be an up and coming filmmaker or a really talented best boy to be worried about your job security. Disney's not afraid to shit can an established director with two beloved hits under his belt either. Guardians of the Galaxy director James Gunn's 10-year-old tweets were shitty and gross. There's no argument about that. But the situation surrounding his firing is extremely complicated, and Disney's knee-jerk reaction could set a worrying precedent, one where CEOs and shareholders stifle art they don't understand. Disney is not afraid to bully and blackball. After all, they shut the LA Times out of early screenings of Ragnarok in retaliation for the paper publishing an unfavorable story about Disney's tax situation. And that was before they swallowed up one of their few remaining competitors. Now, the other studios are all scrambling to hire Gunn, but if the House of Mouse keeps consolidating their power, there might not be a place for people like him to go. With their new clout, there's nothing stopping Disney from going, print what we want you to print, say what we want you to say, and be a good boy, because where else are you gonna work? Sony? <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> The death of Fox means one less place to pitch, one less place to sell your idea and yourself, and one less place to turn when your employer puts you in the doghouse. Look, it's not all bad. Disney didn't just succeed by buying up your favorite IP. They're crushing it right now because they're making amazing movies with your favorite IP. Believe me, I can't wait to see Doctor Doom as an evil sorcerer who rules a fascist dictatorship with an iron fist, or an MCU where mutants are hated and feared by the world they're sworn to protect. But how much of that is Disney, and how much of that is Kevin Feige? Outside of Marvel Studios, we still got some great stuff from Pixar, but we're also seeing a ton of lazy live action remakes and franchises being fumbled. I mean, whether you loved or hated The Last Jedi, you can't argue that Star Wars hasn't become a complete shit show. Well, what do you know? And only time will tell whether the franchise can survive the great divide that split its fan base. We'll have to see what the Disney-Fox merger means for movies, too. Massive studios haven't been this powerful since the 30s, but the landscape has changed since the court's trust busted them down to size. There's almost nothing standing in Disney's way, and while I'm still going to enjoy the amazing Marvel movies and welcome the X-Men to the MCU with open arms, I can't help but worry about the price we might have paid for the privilege. What did it cost? Everything. 
Thanks for watching everybody. I know this video might be a little controversial and I'm not trying to rain on anyone's parade. I'm just slightly concerned about giant corporations buying and ruining everything I love. What do you guys think? Are you excited? Are you nervous? Do you just can't wait to see Cyclops shake hands with Captain America? Leave a comment, let me know, and please subscribe to Now This Nerd.